Hey guys, and welcome to Quality Shot. I'm really excited to be joined by lightweight contender Maxi Hughes. How are you doing, mate? Very well, thank you. Thank you. Good, good. How have you been in these uh, pretty strange times at the moment? How's it been training-wise and everything? Uh, just normal. Uh, we've been we've been cautious in gym, um, keeping numbers down, but obviously because professional boxing is classed as an elite sport and we're able to continue to train. And uh, I've certainly been busy last year. Um, and now in gym, we've got in a couple of weeks, uh, 13th of February, Josh Warrington, uh, Reese Small, both boxing. They've been out of the ring a long time, but they've been they've been grafting in gym all, all year last year. So uh, it's their turn now to fight. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. Uh, it's been frustrating. Not been able to see family, etc. But um, boxing wise, it's uh, business as usual. That sounds really good. And as you said, I think in 2020, uh, you got out three times. So pretty good yeah. considering the circumstances. And some boxers didn't even get out, well, get to get out even once, to be honest with you. So, oh, um, yeah. yeah, three, you got out three times and three wins. So good yeah. year for you, 2020 was, wasn't it? Very good, yeah. I, I were almost being a bit greedy. As soon as I came back from Dubai, I, I, were, I asked MTK if I could fight in December because uh, I wanted to keep my momentum going on another payday before Christmas. So but all, all shows were booked up, so I had to take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> how, was, uh, how was it fighting out in Dubai? Um, obviously, you fought out there. Did you have a little bit of time after to kind of enjoy uh, what Dubai has to offer? Uh, unfortunately, no. We had to. We fought on the Friday night. We had to get up Saturday and, and pack us bags and and get off. But the we did go out. We went out four or five days before, and um, we got to see a bit. We went to uh, mall, one of the malls, a couple of times. Um, we also we also had a day out. Uh, someone we know over there uh, lives lives over there, and they've got um, their chauffeur took us for a bit of a, a tour and a drive round and we saw some uh, nice places and nice things. So we did get, we had a couple of hours out, yeah. I managed managed to get to the beach and dip my feet in the sea. Um, so that were nice. But, nice. Uh, yeah, so, and I've, I would have loved to have stayed longer and had some proper relaxing time there, but uh, it was just a, just a business trip. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Uh, obviously, you one of those wins uh, was against John O'Carroll, which at the time you were seen as a you know a very big underdog. 12, I think twelve to one. It's, it's yeah. to, twelve to one. There you go yeah. for those who bet. I guess uh, so. Yeah, so twelve to one underdog, and look, going into that fight, a lot of people writing off, and then he pulled off a very impressive win over John O'Carroll, who had just beaten Scott Quigg uh, in his previous fight, and obviously has fought yeah. for a world title as well against Tevin Farmer. Um, but just coming short there. How was it? Well, first of all, going into that fight, I'm, I'm sure you had the utmost confidence, but after, how did it feel? Were you just like, you know what? I knew this was going to happen. Or were you very happy with the performance? Like, How did you feel after? Uh, I was I was uh, really happy to get the win. Uh, I know it were a, a close-ish fight. I did think I'd done enough to win, but because I've been on the sort of wrong end on of them decisions before, and I've seen them happen time and time again, as we all have in boxing. Obviously, Jono being a big name, being an MTK fighter, and and I'd been brought in as an apparent keep busy fight for Jono. Um, I, I did have in back of my mind that initially I, Bell went and I thought I've won this, I've won this, but. Then when I was sat there, wait, uh, stood there, sorry, waiting for referee as they were reading scores out, I was a bit uh, like, oh, are they going to are they going to take this away from me? Um, but to get to get the win, I thought, yeah, I, I knew I've done enough. The judges have seen that I've done enough, so um, yeah, just uh, really happy to get my hand raised. Yeah, and no, that was a really impressive performance, and I think a lot of people actually had it. Uh, in their like 2020 uh, awards as one of the biggest upsets of the year so you know yeah. it's good considering you know 
as you said, you were a big underdog, so a really impressive win. Then you followed it up with a, another impressive win over unbeaten fighter, uh, Victor. I'm going to try and pronounce his surname. Uh, okay, there you go. Thank you very much for that <laughs> in Dubai. And uh, yeah. picked up the WBC International Lightweight title as well. Yeah. How did you rate your performance there? Uh, okay. Um, I thought it was a good, a good performance. Um, it, was, it was a bit frustrating because if it was a proper referee, it would have been a third round stoppage because he did actually stop the fight. Um, but it was, I, I believe he was an inexperienced referee. It was brought in the day before the fight because our original referee um, tested positive for COVID. So the original referee, who was a former fighter, who would be, it, it had a 40 odd fights as a pro. So he's, he's, he's experienced in the, in the, as a boxer. Um, and I think, he'd, I think he'd done quite a few fights. Uh, as, a, as a professional referee as well. So he, he's somebody who'd got experience. So when when that in that third round, when I put him down, I went back in then to finish him off. And he sat on ropes, he had his hands up. He didn't throw a single punch back. He was taking punishment. He didn't want it. He'd, he'd, give, he'd give up. He didn't want it. Uh, and the referee said, stop. Like, waved it off. And I thought, I've done it, I've beat him, I've stopped him. And then the, the last 10 seconds, banger went. So that the referee heard that and he, he sort of panicked. And then he, he let it carry on. And then he got saved by the bell. And to, to be fair to Victor, credit to him for sticking it out and, and trying to fight back. But I think then I, I sort of tried to look for that uppercut a bit much. And then there was an issue with the uh, the canvas being really slippy. We both kept slipping a number of times, and it went back in my head, being a bit cautious, not putting, not being too heavy on my feet, and putting a lot into it because I, I didn't want to slip and then get caught as I've slipped and end up, uh, you know, end up taking a big shot. So that were a bit of a factor um, which were in back of my mind. So. But overall, yeah, I, I was happy with obviously getting the win and picking up that title. Um, but as always, I'm always my worst critic after watching a fight back. There's always stuff I thought, you can do that better, you can do that better. But that's just that's just boxing, that's just part of learning and, and growing. So, yeah, so overall, I was happy, yeah. Nice. So where, for you then... What does 2021 look like? What are you looking to do this year? And how many times are you looking to get out? And potentially, what fights are you looking at? I think I'd like a minimum of three fights, three championship fights this year. Four would be nice. Um, but I'm just waiting to hear back. I'm chomping a bit. I'm already back in training. And I'm raring, I'm raring to go. I'm raring to get a date. I, had a, I got mentioned potentially to be boxing on the... The Dubai card um, on the third of April. Um, no opponent yet, but uh, I've been texting Lee Eaton, uh, been texting my manager Steffi Ball to try and try and like get him on it, just pestering him, trying to get some get some in motion and get some names and get some confirmed so I can have a date and an opponent to focus on. But mm. other than that, I'm just a uh, just keep going, keep training, keep running, you know, try and keep improving and just being ready so that hopefully they can just give me a date and I'm, and I'm going to be ready. Yeah, nice. Okay. In terms of, do you have anyone in mind that you'd really like to fight this year or are you kind of happy with whoever as long as it helps you yeah, progress? Yeah, so whoever, whoever's going to help me progress, whoever would pay me the most money. Um, <laughs> but I've, the WBC have just recently updated the rankings and I'm in at number 15 with WBC so yeah. anyone who's above me in that top 15 I'd, mm. I'd be more than happy to face mm, okay. so one of them I, okay. I see that the, the WBC silver title is currently vacant so if they could get me in with somebody for that then that's another belt to add to collection and Obviously, fighting for that will put me up higher in the hopefully in top 10. Yeah. 
so we could just keep progressing. That, that's what uh, my goals are for this year to climb them, climb them rankings and, and get towards that top top five. Okay, nice. No, that makes sense. Now that you've got that title to go down the WBC yeah. route, so yeah, that's fair enough. That makes complete sense. In terms of you mentioned that you are fighting, well, sorry, you're training even. Uh, with people such as Josh Warrington, etc., because you know, you're under the same trainer. Yeah. What's it like being around someone who, you know, until recently, uh, was, well, he was a world champion and you know, he's he's chosen to relinquish his IBF title. But yeah. uh, what's it like to be around someone like him who's who's unbeaten? He's you know, he's a big name in the sport. He has a big following. Um, yeah. What's it like being around him? Does it rub off on you a little bit? Yeah, it does, and, and we all rub off each other in gym. Uh, we've got a great atmosphere in gym. Um, we all bounce off each other. We all we all get on really well. Uh, we have a good crack, good banter in gym. So, and then like seeing seeing how Josh trains, it uh, it, it pushes us and spurs us all on. Uh, knowing as long you know, proofs there what Josh has done has won him a world title. So. You know, we, we just we try try our best to follow suit and, and try and follow the route that, that Josh has gone down. So yeah, yeah. it's a uh, real buzz in gym. Yeah, hundred percent. And your your division at the moment is pretty hot right now, um, especially yeah. kind of globally, isn't it? There's a there's big Definitely, big talk on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, in terms of the sport, so for maybe people that are not too familiar with how you got into the sport, do you want to just give me a a very kind of quick rundown of how you got into into boxing. Yeah, so when I was thirteen year old, start playing rugby league. Uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I wasn't bad. I was I were only small, um, but I was I was fit and I could run fast. So and I, and I wasn't afraid to tackle. So um, I had two two seasons as playing rugby league. Um, but then in one of the one of the preseason training, going in, I think going into the, what would have been my third year, um, our coach took us to a boxing gym, just to make things different, keep us interested, bits of different training to keep us fit. Um, but I really enjoyed boxing, uh, really enjoyed it. So I asked my mum if she would uh, be able to find an amateur boxing gym where I can go and get fighting. Within a couple of weeks, she found out a gym, Doncaster Plant Works. Uh, been been around a lot, been over just over hundred, I think hundred years. Last year was its hundredth year of being open. So some real history uh, around that gym. Uh, some great coaches, Ken Blood, Paul Harrison, Dave Croft, who uh, looked after me as amateur there. So since as soon as I got there, I was already fit and read uh, from a, a tough sport in rugby league. So. I sort of fit right in and was straight into boxing and threw myself at it, loved it, loved the praise and just loved everything about it. So I had my first amateur fight then when I was 15. Um, and then I had five years as an amateur, no timeout. Just uh, had 53 fights. Boxed some top names, some, some good names in amateurs. Um, and then it got to about uh, 20 seen a couple of lads who had boxed and beat in amateurs turn pro. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to, in I'm going to inquire about this. So I in inquired about it with some of the lads who had boxed uh, and ended up turning over myself. And then, you know, that, that was 10 years ago. <laughs> we're now at this point now where I'm on best, I'm in best form that I've ever been in and been signed by MTK, a big, big promotional outfit. So uh, things are going well. I, I did say as well when I were, when I was younger, like I'll probably be retired at thirty. Once I hit thirty, I retire. Think me being really naive, thinking I'd have a couple of million in bank, a couple of Ferraris in garage, <laughs> and I'd be able to just do what I wanted. But uh, slightly different from that. Um, it's a lot a lot tougher sport than than I thought. Uh, it's harder to make it than I thought. So. Uh, I'm just sticking at it, but I, it's just like part of me. Boxing, I just feel is part of me, so I can't. I don't know when I'll be. Uh, I don't know when I will uh, 
hang the gloves up or I don't know. I've certainly no plans to in the near future. So I'm just enjoying it. I'm really enjoying boxing in a minute. So yeah, I'll just carry on. Nice. Well, I'm, I'm sure those Ferraris and, you know, everything else that you want, who knows, there's still time. There's still time yeah. to rack it up. As you That's said, yeah, yeah, have a big 2021. Who knows? So I you might, said I might, go for, I might go for beating Bernard Hopkins' record of being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. In terms of so you said, look, you when you're younger, you wanted uh, you know the glitter and glamour, and you, you know you haven't quite got to those heights as of yet. But you know, as I said, you've still got time. For you, what are your long term plans then? What are you looking to achieve? Do you have like a tick list which you're thinking this is what I want to achieve in my career? And if so, what are they? Um, uh, at the minute, like when I, when I started out, uh, I, I sparred Gary Sykes a lot. Uh, he, he when I turned over, Gary was British champion at the time, so we did a lot of sparring with Gary, and obviously Gary was British, and I, I looked up to Gary then, and uh, and then since sparring him, I set my goals on just just being British champion. I didn't sort of, I didn't think. Oh, 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 you know, uh, everyone's, oh, yeah, I want to be world champion, I want to be world champion. I just looked at that British and, uh, and uh, I just wanted that British title. So I just concentrated that sort of aim for that. And I, I fought for it twice, fell short both times. And it is about, I would still love to, to be able to get hold of. Um, but now that where my, where my career has gone, just from last year by beating Carol and, and beating Victor, and winning WBC and then now being number 15 in world. Um, and now sort of, sort of not change my goals as in I won't ever want the British title because that, that could still be there. Um, but now that now that I'm in top 15 in world with WBC and I've got this belt, my new goals now were to climb their rankings and, and see how far I can get and um, push to try and fight for a world title. So they're, they're my goals. Um, I'm not the, sort of there, sort of my just goals that I've not thought, right, this is what I want to achieve by this date. And then by this date, I want to achieve that. I just thought, that's my goal now. I'm going to just keep chipping away at that goal. And then we'll just see where, where that goes. And then if something else comes up, then I'll, I'll evaluate and maybe reset goals or whatever. But in the meantime, it's just, Try and climb up them WBC rankings and just see how far I can get and uh, hopefully get a few good paydays so I could. I'd love to be able to finish boxing and have my mortgage paid. Um, that that would be, you know, if I never won a world title, but I'd managed to get my mortgage paid, I could still look back and say, this is this is what I've achieved in my boxing career. Uh, to have it paid off is uh, it's a big achievement, isn't it? It's, uh, so, yeah. yeah, that's where that's where I'm at. We where I'm looking forward now. Nice way. Well, yeah, it sounds like you're really grounded and paying off your mortgage is something that I think everyone can pretty much relate to. So I'm sure everyone's thinking, yeah, you know what, he's got a yeah. point there. Like you know, because yeah. you know, as you said, when you're younger, you want to buy a, buy this, buy that. But when you get older, you probably think, I just want to pay off everything. You know, yeah. Relax, and, you know, when I, when I was younger, I did have a. I was taking time because I was subcontractor at work. Um, so I was like taking six to eight weeks off before my fights mm. so I could fully concentrate on yeah. being a full-time pro. But then the money I was getting from the fights was sort of just breaking even. It was covering the cost of a training camp. Mm. So I'd, I'd have the fight and I was sort of no better off. Um, so now what I've... <clears throat> by Just by... Uh, I think training smarter mm. with Sean uh, as my trainer. Uh, and, and I think just with age, I don't go up as heavy as I used to. When I was younger, I used to like have my fights and then like I'd almost see it as a challenge to see how much weight I could put on <laughs> and then see it as a challenge to get, you know, you know, sort of like looking at what Ricky Atten did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sort of like thinking, yeah, I'm going to be like Ricky. Ricky did it. So, uh, and I think a lot of boxers did that. And, well, they still do. But now as I've got older, I think I've just sort of lost appetite and just become smarter and better educated about food and diet. So mm. I don't really go up um, a lot at all. Um, 
I always stay within a, a good, reasonable amount of my, my fighting weight. Um, I stay in gym all the time. So I've always got a good base level of fitness. Mm. Um, so I'm always ready to go. So I think with getting older and more experienced, you become, uh, become a bit wiser. Nice. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I think it, it's funny that I guess the older you get, um, the less easy it is to shed the weight, isn't it? As well, so you become yeah, more... as well, yeah, I've yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's true. You yeah. notice it, right? Like you get older, and you just think, you know, I don't have them. Maybe the uh, metabolic rate I used to have, I can't just eat this, and I can burn it off so quickly. So no, that's fair enough. Um, as I said, your now your division at the moment is pretty much on fire. So I wanted to get maybe, let's say, your top five in the world. Okay, so yeah. I, I think. Let's let's say the five are uh, Tiafimo Lopez, Lomachenko, yeah. Monte Davis, uh, Ryan Garcia, and Devin Haney. So yeah. if you had to put them in order from one to five, and the number one being the top top dog, how do you rate them? Um, so right now, uh, I think I've got, I think I've, I mean, I'm just sat in my garden and got a room at bottom of my garden. I'm sure I can hear an owl. Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, can you hear it. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's think that's an owl, you know. <laughs> I've not heard that before, unless it's some kid stood in his room <laughs> pretending. Uh, but it does sound like an owl, that. Um, it's, it's, it's not someone, it's not my mates messing about. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in, in terms of uh, number one, I would have to say Tiafimo, just because he beat the man in, in Lomachenko. Um and then for number two, I would probably have to say Loma because it was, it was a, a close fight with Tiafimo. Um, and, and not only that, for what he's done, uh, his victories, etc. Uh, number three, uh, Tank Davis, um, which he, he could easily be number one because if he, hits, if he hits any of them guys with that uppercut that he hit Santa Cruz with, I think he'll put, he'll put any of them to sleep. Uh, I think his power is unbelievable, um, but just because he's Santa Cruz is a massive name, but like when you look at him compared to Loma and Tiafimo, um, I put Tank at number three, and then it's a tough one with uh, Garcia and Haney. You would have to, I would have to put Haney at number four just because he's got that he's got that belt, he's got that world title. Um, and obviously Garcia's biggest win is Luke Campbell. Um, so it is now is now on that stage. He needs needs big wins now. You just I just hope that they all they, them them five fight each other. I know Loma's hungry for it, and he'll he'll probably be happy to step in with any of them because he is he's obviously a bit older and he and he's proved that he does just want to fight the biggest and best names out there. So it's just like, it's down, I suppose it's down to boxing politics, the managers, the promoters, how, how much they want to make it and how much money they want to make off it. Or, you know, you, you just don't, but they, they want to be the promoter who puts the biggest the, the biggest names against each other. But um, yeah, that's what order I've put them in. But I would like to see them all fight each other, definitely. Yeah, 100%. As, as you said, hopefully we get to see you know, maybe one or two of those guys fighting each other uh, this yeah. year. Let's see. Let's see. There's a lot of chat, but you know, nothing's yeah. done until the, uh, biggest, the, fight the biggest one out there. The, mo the most one I'd like to see is mm. Lopez against Davis. Mm. That, if, out of all of them, that would be the one that I'd really want to see. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's then, a huge then, one. then it's then it's all the belts then, isn't it? Well, yeah. well, except for except for any WBC, <laughs> the WBC of Got that way like WBA, have not they? With yeah, no. franchise, it? franchise, franchise, yeah, a lot of bollocks in it. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, it's a I bit confusing, <laughs> yeah, it's very confusing. And we're saying with WBA, a regular champion and a super, yeah. And when out casuals are like, well, who is the world, who is the main, yeah. who's the top dog, yeah, that's probably too many belts, but then that's uh. Maybe that's a topic for another day. I could probably talk with yeah. you for ages about uh, the, yeah. the number of belts that there should and shouldn't be. But yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I think it's, it's confusing for sure. 
Um, before we wrap up, actually, I've got one last question uh, just on what arguably will be the biggest British event since, I guess, the World Cup winning uh, England side in 1966. Uh, AJ versus Fury. So who is it? Eddie Hearn and Bob Arum keep on saying it's done. It's not completely done, I don't think, yet, because it hasn't been confirmed, obviously. But if it yeah. does go ahead, how do you see that fight going? Uh, I see a Tyson Fury win. Oh, maybe it wouldn't be the most exciting fight, because obviously Fury will be cautious of Joshua's power, because he's, he's shown he's powerful. But at the same time, Deontay Wilder hit Fury with his best shots, and they just bounced off him. Uh, he obviously put him down in the first fight heavily and he got up and he was fine and he took the fight to Wilder. So Fury showed he can be hit by the hardest punching every way in the division, in the sport, uh, and he can get up and carry on fighting. So it's sort of like, what can Josh, if Joshua does it in with his best, is it, what effect is it going to have? Um, but I see Fury outboxing him. I think... Uh, I don't think Joshua's as versatile as Fury. I've seen Fury box a full entire fight. I think it meant Martin Rogan. Uh, he boxed the full fight at Southport. And for somebody his size, it defies nature, like science and all. Somebody his size shouldn't be able to do the things that he does, his movement, how slick he is. Uh, it can, it can also box the entire fight on his toes. Where I know Joshua can't, he's, he's shown. When he does go the rounds, it, he's prone to getting heavily tired. And I know the, the science experts say similar problem to what Frank Bruno had because they're so muscular, the muscles require so much oxygen and over the rounds, the muscles are that big, just burns them out. Whereas Fury is not built like that bodybuilder. So he's, he's more relaxed, he's more fluid with his punches. Yeah. He's got more energy over the rounds. He can do the rounds at a good pace. Mm. He's still there yeah. boxing well in the 12th round. So, yeah. what, what do you think yeah. of the, uh, the the second fight against Andrew Ruiz, though? Uh, I, I guess to me, I didn't, I didn't really see him gas out on that one. It looked like he shed a bit of muscle mass, as you were saying. So, yeah. if, if you see that one, it's a bit lighter. Do you think he's got more of a chance being able I to... I think he's got... Well, you could say that. You could say, yeah, he did He did make adjustments and, he, and fair play. He did box on back four. But I don't think there were too much... In, this is my opinion. I don't think there were a lot of engagement. I think if he... I think if he goes into that fight and boxes that fight against Fury, it's more of a chess match and a technical. And I think Fury is better at that than Joshua. He's got the longer arms, he's got the reach, he's got the better footwork. So I think Fury would beat him at that type of fight. But also if Joshua like thinks, right, I'm going to tuck up and I want to come into Fury and try and knock him out. I also think that will suit Fury as a counter puncher and as a back foot boxer. So uh, I don't, I, I, my opinion is I don't make a big case for Joshua able to win this fight. I just think Fury would be too much in all the departments. And I think he could potentially get in his head with my games. <laughs> yeah. Fury, Fury's pretty, pretty good at that. Where Joshua likes to be, you know, let's stay humble, let's keep it respectful, you know. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Fury, yeah. Fury can just, he could wind him up. He's, he's, I hope it does happen. Yeah. It would be really fascinating, like, to see it. Yeah, it would be. It would be. And I think it'll be a, it, they're saying it's a two fight deal so hopefully I, I don't think the first fight will be here but hopefully the second one will at least yeah. be here when hopefully obviously the whole situation's calmed down a little bit and maybe we can get a crowd and I mean that would be huge oh, you know, yeah. at Wembley or the Principality Stadium and and all yeah I, I see what you're saying I think the mind games would be quite interesting and, uh, but to be fair I think Joshua as you said he's normally quite you know laid back yeah. and he doesn't really bite but with him and Fury, they have constant back and forth. And I, I think, you know, they've they've got each other's numbers and they do talk, but there's that big rivalry yeah. there. So I think the press conference will be quite heated, yeah. actually. Uh, interesting to see whether, um, you know, AJ engaging potentially works against him or in his favour. But, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully it happens yeah, anyway and we can uh, discuss yeah. it then. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Before we wrap up, is there anything you want to touch upon? Uh, no, uh, just, well... 
Did uh, Did you know I won five to eight? Yeah. <laughs> you won five yeah, to the year. Well, but MTK's five to the year, twenty twenty. Nice. Well, congratulations. That, I, uh, I was in the I was in the running with uh, Tyson Fury, Josh Taylor, and Josie Dickens. Okay. Very very. Well, incredible oh, company, very, yeah. so congratulations. And, and, then, yeah. uh, and then Max Hughes from Doncaster gets <laughs> gets the win. <laughs> yeah. Look, as I said, you had a fantastic 2020, so no long may you uh, continue to have a great great 2021 yeah. as well. Hopefully you continue that yeah, form it. through, and then maybe you'll get MTK Global by 2021. It, yeah. Who knows? That's definitely something uh, I'd be aiming for. <laughs> Regain the uh, regain the title for this year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, even if Tyson Fury beats Anthony Joshua twice, if you put on a crazy yeah. 2021, imagine if you well, won that. I'll do some you would have done some crazy things. After beat beat Javante Davis, two feet low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they can put me four fights this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, thank you very much though for being on. I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day. Um, I can't hear that. I can't hear the owl anymore. No, I think so, I've uh, heard it a bit in distance. <laughs> sound like he's gone to someone else's house now. Yeah. Somebody else must be doing an interview <laughs> somewhere else, so he's gone to bother that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But yeah, thank you again, and uh, stay safe as well. And I hope you and your family are, are all good. And I'm looking forward to some fight news as well. So I'm sure. Yeah, we'll hopefully soon. Some Fingers fight. crossed. It should yeah. be soon. Yeah. Yeah, I have my eyes peeled, and then maybe we can catch up either. Uh, when something gets announced or just after as well. So I look forward to catching up. Yes, there as well. thanks, you. Thanks for having me on anyway, Paul. No worries. Have a good one, mate. You too, mate. Thanks, bye. Cheers, mate. Bye.